Hello and welcome back to my shop. Today I'm going to be doing a little challenge and I'm going to be turning this <laughs> long fence post or fence railing into a coat tree. Uh, it's something I've wanted to do for, for a couple months now and I just never had the right piece of wood. I'm going to start by taking off a lot of uh, this dead stuff on the outside to get to some better looking wood on the inside. And then after that I can shape it down to maybe two inches wide or something like that. Not too thin, not too thick. And once I have it into a square, I'm going to take off the corners and make it into a octagon. But I want to keep about two and a half feet off the ground as a square, because I think I'd have a nice transition of that square base moving up into a nice looking octagon shape. I'm going to take a measuring tape and cut this down. So I've got this post mostly squared up, but there's still a, there's a bend in it, and I was tr trying to figure out how to how to get that bend out of the wood, and I thought, oh, I'll use a chalk line, but I don't have a chalk line, so that made me think of what other ways could I could I be able to mark a straight line. So I remembered that when I built this shed that I'm working in. I have this bar left over. This metal bar is very straight and should let me mark a nice straight line on my post. After a long time planning, a, a very long time, I finally got it to the, a nice square shape that I'm pleased with. It's not perfect and there are still uh, rough spots, but I'll sand that out later and some of it will come out when I do the beveling, or the, the chamfering, which I'm going to do right now. I'm going to take a plane and chamfer all these edges so that it becomes an octagon instead of a square. All my chamfers cut out and most of this pole and octagon. I'm now going to take a chisel and a saw and clean up this little transition between the octagon and the square. I just think that it would look a little bit nicer. <laughs>
The top of this post looks a little bare. Let's add something to give it a little more pizzazz. My next step now is to make the legs of the coat tree. And I've got this template to help me. And I'm gonna take my, some pallet wood, lay the template on, mark out the shape, and cut them all out. And I should have my legs.
Now that the legs are glued up, I'm now going to be able to stain it and I'm going to be able to make these little hooks. The hooks are made out of mild steel and I've already made three of them. Now I'm going to make the last one and I'll show you how to do that. So silly mistake, I forgot to push record when I was staining. I pushed record right after because I thought I was stopping the recording, but sorry I didn't have any footage of staining the coat tree, but now I'm going to put up the hooks and then I'm going to put on a finish coat of, um, I wanted to do polyurethane, but it hardened up in the container. I don't know what happened, but I'm going to use some other finish. Before I put the finish on, I'm going to paint over these screws. I just want them black and not so shiny silver. Ta-da! That's how you make a coat tree. Uh, I am very pleased with how this turned out. I, I really like it <laughs> a lot. Now this has been in the works for about two months. I started a little bit before April and it's almost June. So yeah, I've just been too busy with other commitments to really get a lot of time in, in the shop to work on it. Nonetheless, it is very cool and I am extremely happy with how this turned out. With that said, thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. I appreciate you watching and sticking along. I will see you in the next build.